Good morning. Hey, we're awake today. Good job. <laughs> All right. Good morning. I am Pastor Stephanie. I'm the associate pastor here at Grace, and I just want to welcome you here this morning. Um, we are in a series called The Season of Obedience. And um, I had mentioned last week that we had started this year with, with obedience as our word of the year, and we're ending our year with, with obedience. And so it's so fitting that that, that 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 is the way that God lined things up for us this year and just looking past, looking over this past year and just seeing all of the ways that I've witnessed people just walking in obedience and just doing the things that God has called them to do has been amazing. And so I'm so excited to just finish the year with this topic as we look at the Christmas story and as we look at the different people involved in all of that happening such a long time ago and the obedience that they walked in in that time in their life. Last week we talked about Zechariah who was the father of John the Baptist when he was told that John was coming, his son, and just the moment of unbelief that he had, like, well, how do I know for sure, right? Um, but then his total belief in the things that God, God had called him to by the time that his son was born and just looking at that story. And so tonight, today, we are picking up with Mary today. Um, Mary, the father of the... the mother of Jesus. And so I just want to jump right into that today in Luke 1. It says, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, which is Zechariah's wife, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. And then Mary answers, I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, may your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. And the first thing that jumps out is her first initial reaction, right? She's like, wait, that's kind of a weird greeting. But her only question is, how is it going to happen? Not if it's going to happen, not why is it happening, not how am I going to be sure, sure this is happening, but a how is this going to happen just so I know how it's going to work, right? And then her response of, I'm the Lord's servant. May this happen in my life. And it's just such an example to us of her being ready in and out of any moment, right? She was chosen out of all of the people that lived on earth in that time. She was chosen to be the mother of Jesus. She was chosen to be trusted with Jesus, who left the glory and the honor and the power that he had in heaven to come to earth as a dependent baby, and just the magnitude of what that would have been for her. Because Mary grew up hearing these things. She grew up with the anticipation of the coming Messiah. The anticipation of what God was continuing to do. And what he was doing in the earth. And she grew up looking and waiting for the coming of the king that God had told him about. But like, Ze but like Zechariah, it had been 400 years since God had sent someone specifically to be written down in Scripture, information for the people in the world for anything to happen. So she's like, what is happening? There's an angel right here, right? At first she's like, I'm not, okay. They're talking to me, okay. It's like, oh, oh, okay. And so just that moment of like, yes, I'm in. And then all of the thoughts that I'm sure rushed into her head. How is anyone going to believe this? No one's going to believe me. They're going to think I'm crazy. When I tell them that an angel talked to me, they're going to be like, that hasn't happened for 400 years. Stop making up stories. Just admit the fact that you did wrong, right? 
they're, 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 they're going to believe all of that stuff, all of the wondering, like, this is going to happen, but if someone reports things to certain people, they could, like, stone me to death, right? The possibilities there, even though she believed, even in the midst of her belief, all these possibilities had to have just swarmed in her head, right? But our thoughts for this, just from this part of the story, th the thoughts for us today is that we can be ready for what God brings to us, right? We can be ready when God comes to us with his plan because he has things for each and every one of us just like he had things for Mary because he knew that she was the one and she just had to believe it and walk forward, right? She had to be the one to tell the people around her that this is happening, this is what the angel said, this is what God's doing, and tried to absorb the fact that God picked her out of all the people. And like Mary, we can be ready when God comes to us with his plan. We can be ready in our moment, right? We, we can be living our life, our everyday life. Mary was just living her life. She was just living out her day when the angel appeared to her. It was just another day for her. Back then, she, she could have been as young as 12, a teenager, right? Living out what she knew to do, doing all of, all of the things, following God, doing the things that she knew to do in Nazareth, in Nazareth, which was not the most, it wasn't the greatest place. Later, in the Bible, it's when they heard of Jesus from Nazareth, can anything good come out of Nazareth? It wasn't a great place, right? It was a humble place. She was just a girl living her life the best way she knew how. And God was like, I have this for you. Here you go. And we can be ready in moments when God brings something to us. We, we can also be ready when God's like, this is what I have for you right now in this season. Maybe it's a one-time thing. Maybe it's one little thing I have for you, and maybe it's a bigger thing in your life. But he prepares us for that. We can be ready for the things that he brings us. This morning, I just remembered this story that I've told a lot, but not for a while. So there's probably a lot of people that haven't heard it. When I was 15... I was, I went, actually, no, I'm, I'm going to tell us in a minute. <laughs> Hang on, got ahead of myself. <laughs> um, but when we are getting ready, when we are doing all that we know to do, right, God also is asking us this question, will we be faithful in what he brings us, right? Will we be faithful in what he brings to us? Because Mary knew that saying yes to this and all of the what-ifs that could happen, that life wasn't going to be easy because people around her weren't going to believe her. I mean, Joseph didn't believe her at first until an angel told him it was okay. And all of the, all of the things in her life that she knew were going to be hard at that point. And she pushed through. And he, God wants us to be faithful even when things are hard because you know what? He knew it was going to be hard. He's not surprised. Like, I like my phrase of the year. God is not surprised, right? He knows the plan. We may just be finding out about it. It may be shocking for us, but it's not for him. Because he's put all the things in place. And he wants us to push through those things. In James 1, it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be, be mature and complete, not lacking anything. God wants us to push through. He wants us to persevere and to persevere with him correctly. He wants us to push through these things so that we can be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So then we are today in the place that we are supposed to be, so that we are lined up doing what he has called us to do which is seeking him first in his kingdom. In Matthew 6, it says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Because sometimes in the midst of our trying to plan out how things are going to work, we can tend to stress about things. Well, God has said this, but I don't know how that works, and I don't know about all of these little details, about all of these things that are going to make this happen. And God's just like, just walk. <laughs> Just 
move. I've got it. Because we look at this verse, seek first, and then he'll add these things. We're like, well, well, what are those things? So looking at this verse in context, going back to verse 25 in Matthew 6, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is life is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. Do they not... They do not sow, sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your father, your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they are? Can one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the, of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in, in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grasses of the field, which are here today and tomorrow are thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And God wants us to be seeking him and his righteousness and doing the things that he has called us to because he knows we need them. We're to seek him first, and he knows what we need. He will bring it along. We don't have to know every detail, even though we like to, because we have control issues right? <laughs> we like to know the plan. We like to know all the details so we know all the things. And sometimes God doesn't let us know those things. Sometimes he does. Sometimes he doesn't. And that's okay. He's like, just seek the things that I am doing in the kingdom through you on earth. Walk in obedience and all the things will fall into place. You just do what I told you to do and be ready in the moment, right? Now the story comes in. I need these verses. <laughs> when I was 15, um, I went on a mission trip to the city of Pittsburgh. Yes, this story to my brother and sister who, who were sitting in the room. And <laughs> I went on a very, very first mission trip. We went to the inner city of Pittsburgh and worked on people's houses and just did stuff throughout, throughout, the, throughout the city that week. We got there early in the week, like Sunday night or Monday, and we were planning to leave Saturday, right? All week that week, the evening service was called the club. And so every night after our day of service, right, we would come in for a service and we talked about these verses right here in Matthew. Do not worry. Do not worry. Do not worry. Seek me first. And all the things will come together, right? For a whole week, that's all I heard about was don't worry about it. Seek me. That's all you need, right? Right? So we're at the end of the week, and come Friday, we had our day of service, and we're back at the place, and we're having some free time, I think, because it was like in between like dinner and the evening time, or before dinner, I don't know, I don't remember. Anyway, sometime afterwards, <laughs> I'm, I'm just hanging with some like new, new people that, that I'd met there, and just um, hanging out with my friends that had gone along on the trip too, and my youth pastor and his wife come up to me and like, hey, we need to talk to you, can you come over in this room or office or whatever it was? And I'm like, okay, I'm like, am I in trouble? I don't think I did anything wrong, right? And so we go in this room, and they say, hey, we just got a phone call from a, fam from a family friend, and your dad has had a massive heart attack, and they don't know if he's going to make it, and they just needed to reach you and let you know that that's going on, right? And, of course, in the moment... I'm like 15 going, oh my gosh, my, dad, oh my, gosh, my dad's going to die, right? I'm having my like breakdown moment. And then you know what? And then God stepped in and reminded me that for the last five days, all I had heard was, don't worry. Don't worry. Seek me first. I've got you. It'll all come together, right? For a week. Because God preps us. He gets us ready for the things that he's doing in our life. He gave me five days to marinate on the fact that I didn't need to worry about things in my life, that I just needed to seek him first. 
So when my youth pastor and his wife were like, okay, well, everyone just pack up your stuff real quick, and we're going to jump in the van, and we're going to drive all night, and we're going to do all the things, right? But God, God was with me going, it's okay. We were leaving tomorrow morning anyway. Like, we can go to the last service tonight, and we can stay, and we can leave in the morning. Because God in that moment gave me such a peace about, A, either my dad was going to be okay, or if he wasn't, that I was going to see him again. And he gave me such a peace in that moment because he had prepped me for a week for that moment. And it's funny how a 15-year-old in a van with five other students and my youth pastor and his wife, whose dad is the one in the hospital, can be the calmest one in the group. Because God. My friends are all like weepy and teary because they knew my dad and whatever. And they're like, I can't believe he's in the hospital. What if he dies? All, the, all these things. I'm like, it's going to be okay. <laughs> We're going to be okay. <laughs> We're good. I wanted to wait till tomorrow. It's fine. I left my shoes behind that I just bought. Whatever. <laughs> You're in such a hurry for no reason. For a reason, but God gave, gave me peace for that reason, right? And so we drove all night and got to the hospital in like the middle of the night. I don't know. I just remember sleeping under chairs in the waiting room. I don't know. <laughs> he did make it, by the way. I didn't clarify that first service. <laughs> he didn't make it through that. <laughs> it was just the beginning of so many things health-wise in his life. But, but it was that year that my family started coming here to Grace. And I told the story about not wanting to come to youth group here because of all the weird kids. I didn't want to do that. But I did, and I was walking in obedience because God preps us, and he gets us ready. And I can look at that one instance and be like, yes, I was ready for that, right? Sometimes it's everyday stuff. Sometimes it's not these big moments of like, I felt such a supernatural peace, right? Sometimes it's just the little things where you're walking in obedience today and little things that God's asking you to do. I once heard a guy talk about one time he was driving and he just really felt the Holy Spirit telling him, pull off into the gas station, go inside, go to the bathroom, wash your hands, then leave and go on with your trip. That's it. Stop at this gas station, wash your hands. He's like, okay. <laughs> Why? <laughs> okay, whatever. So he went in, washed his hands, and continued on, on his trip. Never knew why he stopped. Who knows? <laughs> God knows, but he doesn't. And sometimes it's the, will you listen to me in the everyday things? I was reminded to be between services by a friend and his wife that one time we had, we had gone on a trip, and he's not one to go on trips. He likes his routine and the comfort of his own things, right? And we were on a trip. We had gone to see some friends in, in Illinois, and we had run to the store for a few things, and it was one of those weird, like, God's like, buy him a Pepsi. Okay, I'll buy him a Pepsi, whatever. I know he drinks Pepsi, so sure. <laughs> and I brought it back, and to me, it was nothing. To me, it was just a reach in the case, grab a, grab a Pepsi. It cost me three bucks, whatever. You know what I mean? Whatever. But to him, that meant more. He, he, he still remembers it. That was years ago. <laughs> but sometimes it's, it's the little things. And sometimes it's the, will you listen to me in the small things so that I can bring bigger things to you? I am getting you ready you need to do these things, right? Be this way in the midst of it. Be faithful in the middle of whatever you're going through, pushing through the hard stuff, still being thankful in the good stuff because God gets us ready and he wants us to know him more in the midst of circumstances and to learn to be content. In Philippians 4, Paul is talking and he says this, I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I'm in need, for I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, right? And what is that secret? I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Not just strength to make it through hard things. Read this in context. Not just strength. Not just a, I'm going through a hard time and plucking this verse out of scripture going, God's with me and I can do all things through Christ. 
God's with me, and I can be content in any circumstance I find myself in. Not just the strength to get through it, but content in the midst of it, which is hard. No one said it was easy. Well, if they did, they need to work through some things. And they, need to re- and they need to read the Bible more. I tell people, people that all the time. If people tell you that your life just gets magically better, don't believe them. They need to study scripture more. <laughs> they need to connect with God more. Because we're going to have trouble, right? Tomorrow has enough trouble of its own, which means there's going to be trouble. But he wants us to learn to be content because we're with him. And with him, we can get through anything with contentment, not just grit our teeth and work our way through it. But we can be content in where he has us, in the hard, in the good. Yes, I'm content. Life is good right now. I'm going to be thankful that this is where I'm at. I'm going to be content, not waiting for the other shoe to drop, not waiting for what else is going to happen. I can just be content in it because so many times, because life is crazy sometimes for some of us, we get used to the crazy. And when God gives us the peace, sometimes we don't know what to do with it. So we need to learn to be content in the good too and not create our own chaos because it's it's what's comfortable. But he wants us to be content in every situation because he wants us to grow. Like it said, he wants us to grow through it. He wants us to be complete, not lacking anything because he prepares us for what's coming. We can be ready. Like I said, we can be ready when God comes to us with his plans because he prepares us for all those things. At least he tries to. Because sometimes he'll bring me to something and be like, I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. And he's like, yes, you can. Now, it would have been easier had you done this, this, and this. But we can still get there. Because he will not bring us to something that he does not believe that we can make it through. Because he doesn't do that. He doesn't line us up for failure. He lines us up for his success, for what he wants to do in a situation. Will it turn out exactly perfect the way that we think it should every time? No. But God's the one that has the plan. He's the one that has the blueprint. He's the one that knows exactly how it's supposed to turn out, whether it's according to our version of success or his. Because sometimes he just wants us to do things in, in obedience, not because it's going to go the way we want. And sometimes it's a, I'm bringing you to this, and you're going to get through this because you can And you're going to do it well. And you're going to do it with contentment and with patience because that is who I have called you to be and that is inside of you. Because I prepared you. We can be ready. We can be faithful in what he brings to us. We can be like, yes, I'm going to do this and I'm going to push through what I feel like are obstacles in the middle of this. And you know know what? Sometimes we need other people. God calls us to live in community. We need other people around us to encourage us in the fact that this is what I have for you, and them going, okay, God told you this, so you need to do these things, right? I joke with people every once in a while that tell me, well, God wants me to stop drinking soda, pop, right? Sorry, I have someone around me that says soda all the time, so now I'm saying soda. (laughs) God wants you to stop doing this and to be healthier in your life, right? I was like, oh, you shouldn't have told me that. (laughs) Because now I'm going to bug you about it. Because now I'm going to be like, are you supposed to be drinking that? I thought you weren't supposed to be doing that. Is that a thing? Really? Or was that, was that your decision or God's decision? Remind me. Right? Because we need people around us that will encourage us. Even Mary needed that. Even Mary needed that. She's like, okay, the angel told me that even Elizabeth is in a miraculous situation like me. I need to go talk to her. And so we pick up in Luke 1, verse, starting in verse 39. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. 
In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. She hadn't even seen her yet. They hadn't even talked yet. She heard her voice. That's all it took for her to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to say these things. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. To which Mary replied with this. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are poor, who, who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant, Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. And Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months. And then returned home. because She had some conversations to have, right? <laughs> but, but even Mary needed to go talk to someone that may have any inkling about what she was going through. And even before she saw her face, Elizabeth confirmed everything that God had told Mary. Before they even talked. And sometimes we need those people in our life to be like, yes, you heard that. And this is what you're doing. And that's awesome. Or that's going to be challenging. And I'm going to be here with you to encourage you to stay obedient in it. Or that's amazing. And I'm going to strengthen you. And I'm going to help equip you because I'm in your life for a purpose. To help you grow in these things. Because we have people that encourage us in, in our life in what God's doing in our life. But we need to find them. And we need to be that person for the people around us. Not the person just being like, well, it's just this one time. I know God told you not, not uh, to do that, but it's just this one occasion, right? No. We just need to find them. Because so many times I hear stories of people walking with God and they are walking with people and people don't handle them right. They're like, this is what I'm doing. And they either discount it or don't believe it or a multitude of things, right? Because we're human beings. And sometimes we can be jerks. And sometimes we can be disobedient ourselves. And sometimes we all sin and we all make mistakes. And sometimes it happens. But that should not stop you. God does not want one person's, your, your experience with one person or multiple people to shut you down, to keep you stuck, to keep you whatever. You may need to go through some people like, oh, not, no, apparently they're not it. Okay. Back up a little bit. Protect our heart. So we're supposed to guard our hearts, right? Not close them. Guard them. And go to the next person. This is what God has said, and I need some encouragement in it. Okay, good. You, you believe me. You know this is right. Great. Help me in this. Help, right? Come alongside me. Help me grow in this area. Because God calls us to community. He doesn't call us to cut community out. That's not of him. It's not the way he's called us to work. But we need to find those people, right? So we can be ready when God comes to us with his plans. And we can be faithful in what he brings to us. And we need to find the people in our life that will encourage us, 
in being obedient to what God is telling us. And we need to be that for each other, right? But all of those things are possibilities. Possibilities only become reality when you choose to do them. So will you? Will you do these things? Will you be ready? Will you walk in obedience in the little things today so that tomorrow, three weeks from now, three years from now, you're exactly where God wants you to be? Will you be ready? Will you let him grow you? Will you let him stretch you? Will you let him bring things to your life that you can be faithful in because you know that he's called you to that place? But will you do it? Will you be ready? Will you be faithful when he brings it to you? And will you look for the people? Will you risk? Will you risk your heart? Will you risk your life with other people? Knowing that if there's hurt that happens, that God can heal that. And there's forgiveness that can happen. And you can move on to who God has called you to be friends with, to, be, to live your life with. Because we each, each, each and every person in this world has safe people. It just may take some of us longer to find them. But God wants us to find them and to walk through life with them and to be that person for others. But will we do it? That's the challenge for us, living this life with God. Will we allow him to get us ready for things in our life? Good things, bad things, all, everything in between. Will we let us, will we let him prepare us? I don't know about you, but I am so excited for Pastor Dave and Jennifer to be here. Because I want to be ready in my own heart. And I want us to be ready for the way that God is going to grow us with them. Because there are certain things that God has put in their heart and in their life that we need for people here, or God wouldn't have called them here. And I'm so excited, but I also am aware that when things change, sometimes it can be uncomfortable, right? We have worked so hard the last few years around here to, to get rid of our traditions that became idols to us. And I know that in transition and in shifting, those things can be challenged if we've gotten used to things, either in the midst of transition or that used to be a certain way. But will we let God prepare us? Will we be ready for them to be able to grow us to the next step where God wants us to go? Where will we be ready in walking alongside them because they're being faithful to come where they are called. Will we do that with other people? Will, will we be that person for them? Will we be that person for anyone else that God brings in this door, that brings in, into our community here, into our personal lives, into our family, our church and our community, our four houses, right? Will we let God change our house? Because he's prepared us. He's made us ready. And he wants us to be faithful. And he wants us to live in community and be that for each other. But it's up to us to choose to do that. And so I want us to think about that this week and just the weeks to come and just keeping that in mind. And like, we look at the life of Mary and she's like, I'm the Lord's servant. And is that my response when God calls me to things that are different? or to the next thing in my life that he has for me? Am I the Lord's servant? Will I say that? Let it be how you have called it to be. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for the plan that you have for us. For us as individuals, for us as families, for us as this church, and for us as this community, Lord, I thank you for the way that you are preparing us. That with walking in step with you, we can be ready for what you have for us that we can be ready to be faithful for, for the things that you have called us to, that we can encourage one another and walk life, walk out life together, encouraging each other to be obedient. 
God, I thank you for your master plan, for your blueprint. <laughs> Jesus, I thank you once again. This time of year just brings it so apparent to my brain how you left the glory of heaven to come as a baby. I look at our babies that have been born the last few months knowing that you came from heaven to be like that, totally dependent on your own creation. Holy Spirit, that we would be listening for your voice, that we would be listening for the ways that you are preparing us, that, that you are telling us the deep things of God that matter in the coming days, weeks, years. That we would continue to listen, that you would reopen when needed our eyes and our ears and our hearts to the way that you are walking, that we would walk in obedience to what you're doing in our life. In Jesus' name, amen.